back at it again folks we have the s14 bn sports wide body this is the blister defend kit i had just finished fitting gluing and then molding on these fenders to this car the next big step of fitting on this wide body uh, is the trunk, believe it or not. The trunk plays a huge role in this uh, getting this wide body to fit really well. Uh, just a back step to put the wide body on, the blend is right at the edge of the seam. So it does build up this panel a little higher. And of course, the trunk, you can see it this right here, now sits lower. One way I can show you the difference, we have about, I would say, 16 inch of a difference. The trunk now sits lower because we had to build this panel a little higher. And I've got that file down as low as I can without exposing the fiberglass, the rivets, um, blending in this seam. And this is not perfectly flat yet. I wanted to get this to match up first. The left hand side has been done. And this is a few steps ahead. I usually do this a few steps ahead before I start filming in just so I know there's no surprises when I start filming this here. As you can see, flush. So now you're thinking, well, how do you get this to match up? Um, the easy way would be just a pylon body filler here till we match up here. Well, two problems with that. One, we make this so thick and that's not necessary. And when you do open the trunk, suddenly this trunk, the thickness of the trunk has doubled. I just couldn't stand seeing a trunk a quarter inch thick just so we can blend in here. Again, this side has already been done and we're still at OEM thickness, yet it matches the height of this here. This is just as high as the other side. But here we go, we have OEM thickness, yet it matches this. Yes, there's filler that's evident here. And uh, it blends in with the curve that comes up to here. So how do you do that? Let me show you. First, let me show you the tools. A set of uh, small channel locks. These aren't anything too big. Uh, this other tool you might not have, but it's uh, pretty cheap at Harbor Freight. These are only 10 bucks. This is called a hand seamer. It's made for folding down seams, like say if you were to get a skin and you want to apply it onto the core, this more or less flattens it here. But we're not going to flatten it. We're actually, I'm going to take this and then bend this lip. I'm going to bend this lip upward just enough to be just below the height of the modified panel on the other side. So hopefully with that hyperlapse you can kind of get the idea of what's going on. I'm only choking up about half an inch, three-eighths of an inch, and jerking this edge upward. First the channel lock will kind of do this uh, coarse uh, bending a little bit more aggressive and then this here will more or less even it out so that way this edge isn't ripply so but uh, you know as as bad as if you just did it with the channel locks the uh, the hand seamer seems to keep it a little bit more even and I'm still gonna go back over and hammer it 
uh, flat. But with just that one pass, you can see how much of a difference it had made last time I used that uh, use a str straight edge. Now you see that little bit of light showing here. That's all that has to be filled in. Very little bit. So now I still have the thickness of this. This is going to match up here. This is obviously much higher. I'll do the exact same thing. Instead, I'm going to use the channel locks. There you go. It does work it's pretty good. You will hear some cracking. That's the original seam sealer that uh, that's just aged and hardened so we have the line kind of matched up already now that this edge has been lifted up it's been dollied flat and smooth and it matches with this edge now it's time to wipe this here uh, if you rub your hands on it what I'm feeling is this trunk likes to curve down and right about there is the low spot then it jumps up to the higher uh, edge that's been made to match up with this here careful around here obviously that's a kind of a, a signature look that's kind of like a little little dip a little almost like a ducktail kind of shape here so don't go too high on this uh, you do want to kind of accentuate this here it's a nice look to this car it gives a little bit more character Now I just wiped this top layer, it's just about tacked over, you saw I ran a razor blade right across this here. We went through all that taping just to make this step so much easier uh, and also to keep all the uh, excess of uh, body filler spilling over into the panel that we already shaped, it's already done. Uh, so ran the razor blade, that cuts the body filler and the tape. Exposes our clean surface. This should be almost level. We just got to block it down. First, I'm going to start with an 80 grit just to get the uh, kind of striations and the stripes down, knock down some of the pinholes, and then 150, then 220. And that will tell me if I need to do another wipe or not. If I do need to do another wipe, then I'll just uh, lift the trunk, make the wipe, so I don't have to really tape this here. This tape was really just to knock, uh, keep this excess off, and then it did its job. So we have a great wipe here. This should block off just fine. I feel a little ledge coming over. When I wiped it, I went lightly over here. This is actually built up pretty high, and uh, the 80 grit will get it level here. 150 will get this locked down smooth. 80, the uh, 220 will get this all feathered in. And there you have it. All shaped out, level. Lines are even. Next step will be to prime coat it. Even with the first coat of primer, the trunk lines already match up. Very little 
uh, invasive work to get the height of the trunk to match the new height of the uh, wide body. Now that the rear fenders are just about done with, aside from a few uh, little detail work, I'll start on fitting the rear bumper. The rear bumper will be next. Till next time.